On tonight's CTV News, the region received its dose of royal fever as the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge swept through Christchurch today. This is CTV News, I'm Grant Mangan. Well, royal fever hit Christchurch today. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge were in Canterbury for the day and our royal correspondent Emma Cropper was there as the royals visited the city centre. It was an early start to the day for some. I got here about six o'clock this morning. Hoping for the best spot to meet the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. Prince William, Prince Kate. <laughs> and as the couple made their way through Latimer Square, they left mobs of royalists ecstatic to have met them. Sorry. She shook my hand. Oh, so excited. <laughs> Are you a big royal fan? I am, yes. Oh, my top, yeah. <laughs> I gave her a stone and it says Aroha, which means love in Māori, and she said thank you and she said it was a very special stone. Thousands have shown up here at Latimer Square today, all trying to get a chance to see the Duke and Duchess. They're standing about eight people deep behind me and all the way around the park as well, so you can definitely tell royal fever is in the air. And royal fever definitely hit Canterbury today, with many going to all different kinds of heights just to get the best view, or even just a wave from the future king and queen. Many came dressed to impress, but it was what Kate was wearing that had the crowds buzzing. She's very nice and I really liked her red dress she was wearing. Oh, Kate's so beautiful, <laughs> like really pretty. Her outfit was a visual tribute to the Canterbury earthquake, a red Laura Spagnoli outfit, which she first wore at St Andrews three days after the devastating earthquake. The royal couple touched down in New Zealand just under a week ago and have already left the crowds of royalists in awe after visiting Queenstown, Auckland and Blenheim. Prince William picked up some cricket tips from some of Christchurch's up-and-coming cricket players. The Duchess even picked up a bat as well. But Latimer Square wasn't their only stop in Christchurch, opening the visitors' centre at the Botanical Gardens, as well as lunch at the Wigram Air Force Museum, but it was the crowds that were left in awe. Oh, I love them. I, I know people don't always agree with the royal family and everything else, but I, I think they're great um, figures for young people. And it was so exciting getting to see them. This is the first time in my life I've ever actually seen a royal people in real life. Yeah, so I'm really excited about it. Tonight the couple head back to Wellington, where they'll spend their last day in New Zealand before flying out tomorrow. Emma Cropper, CTV News. It was one of the more important stops on the Royals' agenda. The Duke and Duchess visited the former CTV site where 115 people died on February the 22nd. A subdued feeling filled the air as the families of the 115 lost in the collapse of the CTV building crowded the now grassy memorial site. Family members hung tributes on the surrounding trees. Children patiently waited and others stood waiting with memories of their loved ones close by all waiting for the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge to arrive. The royal couple spent over 20 minutes mingling with the families. Speaking with CTV's own receptionist, Mary Ann Jackson, who was the sole survivor from the station to make it out of the building. She asked me how I was and how, how we coped with how I got out of the building. Besides the circumstances, the families were delighted to meet the prince and princess. So it was exciting. She was lovely. She was just so human and uh, caring. Over 200 gathered on site, including those injured in the CTV building and families of those lost in the press and PGC buildings on the day of the earthquake. The visit to the site is one of the more important on the couple's agenda while visiting. Yes, I think it's good. Could you come to a tour of New Zealand and um, I think you've got to see the whole thing as it's been, you know. We've had highlights and lowlights and I think this is perhaps one of the lowlights, but it's good that they've come here rather than avoided it and I think that's been really good. I mean, the fact that uh, they come down to Christchurch and in particular to the CTV site to meet the families, to show them their support, it means a lot really to us. 
Prince William visited the quake-stricken city days after the February earthquake to pay his respects, which put many of the families at ease. I think Prince William probably warmed them when he came a couple of years ago and I think seeing the way that um, Kate approaching people and that kind of thing, I think people feel as though that uh, other people around the world have recognised what's happened here and, uh, and you know, feel part of it anyway. Mm. Man Alkasai lost his wife of 35 years in the collapse of the building and made sure the royal couple understood how much they appreciated their support. Then I thank them on behalf of all the families for their support, for their understanding, for their respect, for the fact that they are here meeting the families and, and showing really that they care. The visit to the CTV site was the first public visit for the couple in Christchurch. Emma Cropper, CTV News. And it was a special day for some local schoolboys when given the chance to sing for the Duke and Duchess. Emma Cropper caught up with the boys during rehearsals last week. Polishing off the final touches and perfecting the high notes. The Christchurch Cathedral Choir, ages from 8 to 13 year olds, and CTV News caught up with them as they were preparing for one of the biggest days of their lives. I'm really excited because um, it's the first time I've ever seen like the quite important people in England. So. I can't wait. Well, they're the future Queen and King for England, and it's just exciting to meet them. But until today, what they would be singing has been kept under wraps. We just want to keep it a secret, actually, just so that it's something special. And at their last rehearsal, the pressure was building as song selection was key to impressing the royal couple. <laughs> that is as much pressure, I suspect, as you can get. Um, interesting to think what their musical tastes are, because I don't really know, but I do remember the music they had at the their wedding was, was um, very dramatic and, and, and so I hope what we're seeing for them will seem appropriate. The choir was welcoming the Duke and Duchess through the doors of the transitional cardboard cathedral, a symbol the Dean hoped would show Christchurch's progress over the past three years. I think there really are signs of hope in the, the city that are starting to spring up and it's, it's great to be able to welcome them both back and, and show them that. Emma Cropper, CTV News. Christchurch business is reliant on migrant workers for speaking out about a shortage of housing for new recruits. With many industries facing huge skill shortages, companies say Christchurch needs better accommodation options to attract workers. Tenants Protection Association manager Helen Gatoni says there simply isn't enough accommodation for people living in Christchurch at the moment, and thousands of new rebuild workers this year will only add to the pressure on the rental market. The association says some of our most disadvantaged are already being displaced for our workers, and that may get worse without intervention. Helen Gatoni says central government, the Christchurch City Council and companies should collectively find solutions. Connectix Human Resources Manager Louisa Pilkington says this year the big question is accommodation. The company currently employs 12 Filipinos and is recruiting another nine this year. Connectix says there is a national shortage of electricians with an inability to source staff from within New Zealand. Wealth Changing, an organisation providing accommodation and pastoral care to some of Christchurch's Filipino migrants, says foreign workers make the labour pool bigger, effectively keeping the price of labour at a reasonable level. They say fixing the state of accommodation in Christchurch will be an election issue this year. A spokesman for Jerry Brownlee says the government won't build and provide accommodation for migrant workers, but he says the Earthquake Recovery Minister has used the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Act to change district plans in Greater Christchurch, allowing temporary buildings to house up to 200 people in parts of the central city and up to 20 people in some commercial zone and residential areas. 85 jobs look set to go as Christchurch Yarns goes into receivership, with one union blaming the high Kiwi dollar. First Union says staff at Christchurch Yarns were shocked by the announcement, all of whom are likely to be made redundant. The company is citing a drop in orders, particularly from Australia, as demand for carpet weakens under a high New Zealand dollar. First Union believes the wool spinner will retain the skeleton crew for another three weeks to finish orders. At present, workers' wages and holiday pay will be paid out, but redundancy pay is yet to be confirmed. First Union General Secretary Robert Reid says the workers have a highly specialised skill set and some older workers will find it difficult securing other work. Claims crucial Christchurch City Council assets were undervalued before the Canterbury earthquakes have councillors and staff at odds. The council has given up action against Good Earth Matters Consulting, the firm who allegedly undervalued council assets at ratepayers' expense.
Those criticising Good Earth Matters Consulting say city assets including the Town Hall, former AMI Stadium and Convention Centre, along with many suburban assets such as the Waltham Pool, Sumner Library Complex and the Mount Pleasant Community Centre, all appear to have been undervalued by millions of dollars for insurance purposes. Council Corporate Finance Manager Diane Brandish told the press there appeared to be little point in pursuing GEM because it effectively was a shell company. The council is focusing its efforts on maximising insurance claims as this will bring the biggest return for the rebuild. In 2010 the council disputed there was an undervaluation by GEM for insurance renewal purposes. This came as a surprise to City Councillor and Chair of the Finance Committee Ralph Manji, who says he made a formal request last week for council staff to give a full report on the valuation issues so the same mistakes aren't repeated. Councillor Manji says there is no disputing some assets were undervalued but is unsure where the blame lies and how to redress the issue. It's an historic matter, and according to Ruff Manji, not a high priority, and he's unsure why Diane Brandish appears to back the valuations. Coming up, more cameras are coming to reduce crime. Arts 21 showcases the vast creative talent and minds that are making a name for themselves in Europe and beyond. Think outside the square with Arts 21. Monday morning at 10.30. With so many car fans in the region, Canterbury Christian Funeral Service have been asked very often if they had an enthusiast hearse. So, they bought one. The Ford Galaxy is a custom-built hearse for those who want their last journey to be a memorable one. Complete with racing motor and exhausts, the vehicle certainly stands out and if you want to go out to something that's very different or you want your loved one to have their last journey very special, contact the team at Canterbury Christian Funeral Services. Action Removals, offering short or long-term storage facilities, full packing services, comprehensive rates, all fully insured and with six vehicle sizes to choose from. Earthquake repairs, Action Removals, pack, move, store and return your valuable possessions stress-free. Action Removals, a family business that has been operating in Christchurch for over 10 years. Action Removals, your one-stop removal service on time, every time. 0800 222 526. Ready to go, mate? Flight leaves at 4.30. Relax, mate. We'll park at Airpark Canterbury. Airpark Canterbury, privately owned and operated with a free 24-7 shuttle service. Call 0800 Airpark or book online at airparkcanterbury.co.nz. Avoid the monkeys when it comes to relocating. Trust A1 Movers, a family business since 1993 that guarantees a professional job every time. We carefully handle and wrap your valued items, ensuring they have a safe journey. Secure storage and insurance options are also available. A1 Movers, the careful, caring, moving company. Oi! Concerns about resistance, we changed to Eclipse E and the results have been outstanding. We use Eclipse to grow all our dairy replacements to their full potential. For optimum weight gains for five star beef contracts, we use Eclipse. Eclipse, pour on an injection for cattle. Proudly available from your local vet. Every Monday night, I'll take you out and about around the region's ANP shows from Cheviot to Tamuka. You'll meet the exhibitors, have a look at the sheep and cattle and horses, and also have a look at what people have been producing. Rob's Country Showtime, 8.30 on a Monday night, CTV. Christchurch police are hoping to reduce crime outside of the central city by installing top-of-the-line technology to catch the criminals. Focusing on suburban areas, 10 extra surveillance cameras installed around the outskirts of Christchurch city centre will give local police an extra set of eyes to help prevent and monitor crime. Christchurch has changed as, as the earthquake effect has, has come through, so some of the hot spots we would traditionally have in the CBD have now moved more out into the suburbs, so we've had to react to that a little bit and 
have better coverage across the city. The culture of nightlife has shifted in Christchurch, with more heading into the Rickerton and Addington suburbs over the weekend. The people of Christchurch sort of dictate in some ways where, where the hot spots are going to be, so we want to be in a position to try and uh, prevent crime, so be there when things are happening, and this is a wonderful tool for that. The cameras are all top of the line, being able to pan 360 degrees, as well as zoom in close to track the finer details such as number plates. The cameras will allow police to track incidents without relying on witnesses, such as this red car hitting someone on a scooter and these teenage boys damaging the city's bus exchange. I think it's the way of the future. We'll see more and more use of CCTV. It's a worldwide phenomenon and it's just something that's going to become part of natural life. Almost 70 of the cameras are operating in the city centre. The Christchurch City Council has paid a quarter of a million for the instalment of the 10 extra cameras. From our point of view as a city, um, the cameras are really designed to make the city a safer place to live and work. And from the police perspective, they're a real operational tool for, um, for crime prevention. The footage from the cameras is fed back to the control room in real time, allowing police to catch criminal activity as it happens. Emma Cropper, CTV News. And certainly... Um cameras are a feature of life worldwide. Um, the story prompted us to do a little bit of research online and see just how common or frequent they were around the world. Apparently in London there is now a security camera for every two people. So if there are more than 10 million people living in London, which I believe there are, that means there must be over 5 million security cameras. University of uh, Canterbury researchers have been investigating online and social media prejudices impact on ethnic groups. The study claims the effects of online communication and social media in people's daily lives needs understanding. Two doctors and a postgraduate student have been looking at the impact of reading prejudice and anti-prejudice online comments for the last year in a lab experiment. Dr. Kamal Yogisvaran says they found simply scrolling through the other users' prejudice online comments increases the extent to which participants' own comments are prejudice. The study took comments from online news articles on stuff.co.nz last year. Dr. Yogi Svarin says they more importantly found exposure to such prejudice online comments made users personally more prejudiced toward an ethnic group later on. These prejudice feelings reveal themselves in both self-report measures and reaction time measures, even after a user was offline, suggesting that bigoted comments placed by users can directly impact sentiments toward a group at both a conscious and subconscious level. By contrast, exposure to anti-prejudice comments others made could reduce prejudice towards an ethnic group at all levels of consciousness. The doctor says responsibility falls to individuals to refrain from negative and uncivil remarks. A cultural expert says the South Island's biggest iwi won't be rushing a proposed cultural precinct. Naitahu is at the helm of the Te Puna Ahurea anchor project set aside for iwi-owned land behind the Durham Street Law Courts. Christchurch Central Development Unit anchor project documents show the Hagley Oval and Cultural Centre are the only two projects without time frames. The CCDU's website says the centre will be a unique, vibrant visitor destination, supporting central city recovery through greater cultural, retail and hospitality activity. It should reflect New Zealand's changing identity, work in with the Avon River precinct and provide an inspiring and interactive venue to exhibit and celebrate Naitahu, Māori and Polynesian customs. Naitahu Chief Executive Aria Bennett says the centre is currently a topic for discussion in the tribal and wider community. The Chief Executive says there is no strict timeline. Professor Angus McFarlane of University of Canterbury's Māori Research Centre says his institution is enthusiastic about anything portraying Māori in a positive light. Professor McFarlane expects Naitahu to be careful in their planning. Te Taitunga MP Dino Terikatini says the iwi always delivers high quality projects and this shall be no exception. Well, still to come, it's the start of another week and that means we have sports, traffic and weather updates. Let's face it, everyone has an agenda. And guess what? So do I. Every week, I'll pick three stories that grab my attention. Agenda with me, Brent Goff. The Home Show sale is on. Hi, Mike from Four Seasons. We have the largest range of gas and wood burners on display. All wood burners and gas fires are heavily reduced. Save up to $1,300 on fire and flu packages. The Home Show sale at Four Seasons Home and Leisure, Tower Junction Mega Centre. Yuck, look at all this moss and lichen. I'm not getting up there, not in these heels. Time to call 
Moss Buster. Moss Buster is a no-bleach, non-abrasive, biodegradable solution that has over 35 years of proven results. You can buy Moss Buster online for less than half the cost of other well-known products and can be yours for less than a dollar a litre. You just spray it on and let Mother Nature do the rest, or Moss Buster can do it for you. Check out our website or call the Moss Buster crew for a free quote. Moss Buster, 0800 88 Hi, I'm Steve and welcome to Carpet Kingdom. At Carpet Kingdom we stock a massive range of carpets and we're also the largest vinyl stockers in the South Island. And not only do we have an excellent range in store, but you can purchase our stock online. We offer free measuring quotes, we have our own installation team, we ship nationwide, so come on down and see us at Carpet Kingdom. 312 Wilson's Road in Waltham, just off Brougham Street, or visit us online at carpetkingdom.co.nz. Join us tonight at 6 for DW World News. Informative, lively, international news, breaking stories and global developments. DW News, weekdays at 6pm, right here on CTV. Well, with the weekend at an end, it's time to catch up on all the sporting action with Gordon Finlatter. It's safe to say the Crusaders Super Rugby season is back on track after two wins from two in South Africa. The Crusaders grabbed their first bonus point win of the season in the early hours of Sunday morning when they defeated the Cheetahs in a tri-fest in Bloemfontein. Canterbury looked the goods early in the second half when Nemani Naudolo ran in to put the Crusaders out to a 16-point advantage. However, the Cheetahs went on a run of scoring, notching three tries in the space of 10 minutes. The tries weren't finished there though, with the Crusaders notching four straight before the end of the game to put the home side to bed. After copping criticism going into their trip to South Africa and some heavy questions being asked about the team's ability to get over the try line, the lads have answered in the best way possible by producing on the field. After getting his first try in Super Rugby last weekend against the Lions, Nemani Nadolo notched a hat-trick against the Cheetahs and could prove to play a pivotal role in the Crusaders' campaign should they hope to get into the playoffs. Canterbury head back to New Zealand now with the ultimate test ahead of them next weekend when they take on the defending champions Chiefs in Hamilton. The Canterbury Rams lost in frustrating fashion on Saturday night when they were narrowly edged 77-76 by the Giants and Nelson. The Rams trailed by as much as seven in the final quarter but snuck ahead with just over a minute of play left in the game. Trailing by one, Canterbury had the last possession of the game with Richie Edwards having a chance to grab victory when his three-point attempt in the dying seconds hit the rim. The Rams will take many positives from the game, however in the first two games of the season it has become evident that the Rams will need to improve their rebounding should they hope to be more competitive, giving up seven offensive rebounds alone in the second quarter against Nelson. The next match for the Rams is Saturday against the unbeaten Nuggets. After leading for most of the first and second quarter of their match, the Canterbury Tactics slipped to another loss this season, going down 65-62 to the Northern Mystics in Auckland. The loss keeps the Tactics rooted to the bottom of the Trans-Tasman netball ladder as they have registered just one win from their six matches. The second week of Hawkins Cup Club Rugby has seen high school old boys in Lincoln University move to joint top of the ladder on 10 points with their second bonus point wins of the season. Burnside and New Brighton also recorded their second straight wins of the campaign. They're just behind them on eight points. And finally tonight, congratulations to East Christchurch Shirley, who were crowned a National Cricket Club champions yesterday for the second time in four years. You're up to date with the latest in local sport. I'm Gordon Finlater for CTV Sport. If you're driving around the central city, CTV's traffic update will assist you navigating the repairs taking place. Hello, travellers. To help you plan your journey around the central city, here's an update on the week ahead on our roads. 
Barbados Street between Beely Ave and Kilmore Street has new work starting this week, though two lanes will be maintained during peak times. Barbados Street remains one lane between Kilmore Street to Tuam Street. Works continue on Durham Street North, which is down to one lane in several places. These will be slow in the morning and evening drive time, so please allow extra travelling time. If you're looking to get through the city as quickly as possible, Fitzgerald Avenue is your recommended route this week, whether you're travelling north or south. Stay tuned this week for more updates on what's happening on the Central City roads, and in the meantime, visit the website Transport for Christchurch. And finally tonight, your regional weather. Kia ora Canterbury, now for a look at today's temperatures. Timaru 15 degrees today, Tamuka and Geraldine both on 15 degrees. Ashburton 14, Methven 14 degrees, Rakaia 14, Darfield on 14, Leeston and Rolleston on 14, Lincoln also on 14 today and Christchurch 14 degrees there as well. Akaroa a mild 14 degrees and in North Canterbury, Kaipoi, Rangiora and Amberley all on 14 degrees. Inland now, Culverton and Handler Springs, 14 and the same there in Cheviot. And further up along the coast, Kaikoura on 13 degrees. Now for the weather in your area. Timaru mostly fine with thick high cloud and moderate mild northerly winds. A few showers are possible. Tonight's low 11 degrees, tomorrow's high 20. Ashburton, a milder day than the last few, with north to north easterly winds and high cloud. Tonight's low 11, tomorrow's high 20 degrees. Mostly cloudy again for Christchurch, but milder temperatures for your Tuesday, with a northerly breeze. Tonight's low 11 degrees, tomorrow's high 20. Kaikoura, high cloud increasing during the day and some showers developing during the afternoon. Milder northerly winds are expected. And you'll receive a low of 11 tonight and a high of 18 degrees tomorrow. In other areas around Canterbury, Tamuka and Geraldine, cloudy for you with 21 degrees. Methvin 21 and 21 there in Rakaia. Darfield, you're on 21 degrees tomorrow and Leeston 20 degrees. Rolleston and Lincoln 20 degrees for you as well and also Akaroa on 19 degrees. And in North Canterbury, Kaipui and Rangiora 19 degrees tomorrow. Amberley also have 19 expected there and Culverton, Handler Springs and Cheviot also have a cloudy day ahead with 21 degrees. Looking ahead for Canterbury, cloudy and cooler on Wednesday with some light rain at times and moderate southwesterly winds. Cloudy with periods of rain developing during the afternoon on Thursday and falls becoming heavy from evening. Fresh gusty easterly winds may become strong at night. Heavy rain expected on Easter Friday, easing slowly later in the day. Strong gusty cold easterly winds decreasing gradually. Any early showers clearing and sunny periods increasing during the day on Saturday with mild temperatures and moderate northerly or northeasterly winds. Fine and mild with winds tending moderate northwesterly on Sunday and next Monday. And that's your latest weather update. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And that's CTV News for Monday. I'm Grant Mangan. Good night. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand On Air.